Hello everyone, we are H2 Gen Consulting Inc. and today in our presentation, we will be showcasing our design solution for optimizing the use of sustainable energy to reduce the environmental impact from the transportation sector. The agenda for today will include a brief introduction of our justification for the project, our design process, our chosen design solution, and a technical analysis of our solution and any future recommendations. The topic that first brought our team together was sustainable technology. Currently, a substantial amount of the greenhouse gas emissions associated with climate change are produced by the transportation sector. In 2018, the transportation sector in Canada contributed to about 25% of the total greenhouse gas emissions, making it the second largest contributor by economic sector. Greenhouse gas emissions have many environmental, societal, and economic impacts. The environmental impact are mainly felt through the reduced air quality, which can cause several health effects such as lung and heart conditions, and from the impacts of climate change, which includes rising sea levels, changes in weather patterns, and increase in extreme weather events, and ocean acidification. These in turn directly affect society and the economy by inducing floods, droughts, and forest fires, which will eventually lower the quality of life due to a world food crisis, reduced air quality, and habitat loss. Since it is evident that greenhouse gas emissions are a major crisis, as major contributors, the transportation sector should look for ways to reduce emissions. To reduce emissions from vehicles, it is crucial to give focus to sustainable and renewable alternatives to gasoline, which is mainly used today. Hydrogen is an alternative fuel that is very sustainable in nature. However, since the technology of hydrogen as a fuel alternative is still relatively new, there are still many issues related to the production, storage, and distribution of it, all of which H2Gen will try to solve. We feel that the biggest issue holding back the adoption of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles is the availability of cleanly produced, economically competitive hydrogen fuel. There are already hydrogen fuel cell vehicles available with similar range and performance to the fossil fuel burning vehicles, and the hydrogen dispensing equipment has already been developed. Therefore, we decided to focus our scope on the production, compression, and storage of hydrogen fuel to be used in refueling stations for the transportation sector. We review the different methods of producing hydrogen, their energy requirements, cost, and safety concerns. We then evaluated the alternatives using our design constraints and criteria. The constraints that each alternative must satisfy relate to emissions, costs, and safety. The design must have lower carbon emissions than the currently most common method of hydrogen production, steam reforming of natural gas, which emits about 9.3 kilograms of CO2 per kilogram of hydrogen produced. The design must also be economically competitive. The fuel costs for hydrogen vehicles must be no higher than the fossil fuel vehicles. For the average passenger vehicle in Canada, this works out to approximately $9.20 in fuel costs for every 100 kilometers driven. Finally, the design needs to be safe. To ensure safety, the design and all its components must meet all standards for the production, compression, and storage of compressed hydrogen. We use several criteria to compare alternatives. Design should minimize emissions, including emissions associated with production, processing, and distribution. Cost should also be minimized. If the system is less expensive to implement, hydrogen fuel infrastructure can be expanded faster and more fossil fuel burning vehicles can be replaced with clean hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Safety is a top priority, so designs that minimize safety risk will be favorable. Designs with greater hydrogen producing capability on a per cost basis or per unit of carbon emissions are preferred. Finally, designs should maximize convenience. The refueling process should be no more complicated than what we are already used to now with gas or diesel vehicles. To begin our design process, the team first created a mind map and explored multiple areas that are causing problems with climate change. We were able to develop a problem definition for the transportation sector and begin researching about hydrogen production. Each team member conducted research on current technologies, codes, standards, and regulations. With the gathered information, multiple solutions were developed and were compared to the criteria in the previous slide. There were many alternative solutions depending on the combination of energy sources, storage, and distribution. 
Each design concept was analyzed from an environmental, safety, economic, and logical point of view. The solutions were listed in a weighted decision matrix by evaluating the importance of each criteria to our problem statement. Additionally, a sensitivity analysis was conducted to further the understanding of the comparisons of each design concept and their relation to the criteria the team developed. The most important factors to the design were emissions, cost, and safety, which were all adjusted to develop multiple scorings for the designs. After decision matrices were developed, a final design concept was formulated, and further research and analysis were needed. To conduct further evaluations, software such as SOLIDWORKS, ANSYS, SIMA Pro, Microsoft Teams, and the Engineering Equation Solver, also known as EES, were used. SOLIDWORKS was used to develop models that followed proper codes, standards, and regulations. Some of the models, such as the pressure vessel, was transferred to ANSYS to compute different stresses due to the internal pressure. ANSYS simulation also enabled the team to see the deformation and sections where failure would occur. SIMA Pro was used to develop a life cycle assessment that could compare our design solution to the current technology used for hydrogen production, such as steam reforming. Furthermore, to transfer the hydrogen fuel to the storage, a thermodynamic analysis was done using EES software. Lastly, Microsoft Teams was used for meetings and organizing our files. Microsoft Excel was used to develop decision matrices, sensitivity analysis, and Gantt chart. The software made the Gantt chart easily accessible for timeline updates and ensured the team was on track with the work and submissions. Our final design is an on-site hydrogen production, storage, and refueling station to replace the current popular method that uses steam reforming to produce hydrogen gas. The site is similar to a gas station and includes two refueling bays, 120 rooftop solar panels, and an interior hydrogen production process. Since it takes around five minutes to fill a hydrogen car, we thought it would be appropriate to have two refueling bays allowing for simultaneous fueling. As well, since we are using electricity from the grid for our main source of energy, we included solar panels on the roof of our design to provide a bit of renewable energy and reduce our overall greenhouse gas emissions coming from the grid. Saying this, we aren't too concerned about our grid energy being bad for the environment, since Ontario's grid is already quite clean, with 96% of the energy being produced from zero carbon emitting sources. The following is the interior of our hydrogen fueling station. As seen on the left, our production process consists of an electrolyzer, compressor, and storage unit. This is the process we use to produce our hydrogen and store it on site, and included on the right is a block diagram outlining the inputs and outputs of this process. To begin, electricity and water are inputted into the electrolyzer, undergoes electrolysis and outputs our hydrogen along with oxygen gas. Next, electricity and the produced low pressure hydrogen gas are inputted into the compressor, outputting high pressure hydrogen. This hydrogen is then transferred into a storage unit until a refueling pump requires it for use. In order to uh, determine the energy requirements, we first determine how much energy input is needed to power the electrolyzer. Producing one mole of hydrogen thermodynamically requires an input of 237.2 kilojoules. This means that producing one kilogram of hydrogen gas at 80% efficiency requires an input of 296.5 kilojoules, or 40.85 kilowatt hours. The compression of hydrogen will occur in three stages, with intercooling occurring between each stage as seen in the general schematic diagram. The starting pressure of hydrogen exiting the electrolyzer is 2,000 kilopascals, and the hydrogen is cooled to 35 degrees Celsius at each intercooling phase. The compressor runs at 65% efficiency, yielding an energy requirement of 3.18 kilowatt hours per kilogram of hydrogen gas. The station will also pre-cool the hydrogen in order to ensure fueling times comparable to gas-powered vehicles. This requires an extra 0.15 kilowatt hours per kilogram of hydrogen for a total energy requirement of 44.18 kilowatt hours per kilogram. Our analysis was created based on a 10% market share of hydrogen powered vehicles. This means that we would need stations capable of powering 100 cars per day at five kilograms per vehicle. 500 kilograms of hydrogen would be dispensed daily and that would require 22,090 kilowatt hours input daily. One of our goals with the hydrogen refueling station is to minimize 
the emissions associated with hydrogen gas production. We decided to power as much as possible of the production process with on-site renewable electricity. Our station can fit 120 solar panels on the roof, producing 1.5 kilowatt hours each of electricity daily for a total of 180 kilowatt hours. We selected a domestic wind turbine rather than the large industrial sized turbines for accessibility reasons allowing stations to be built in urban areas. These turbines can produce 5.83 kilowatt hours per day with an average wind speed of 12 miles per hour. Since electrolysis is an energy intensive process, these renewable sources cannot power the process alone, so the rest of the required electricity will be pulled from the grid. Ontario's energy is quite clean, so that using the majority of the energy from the grid is still a viable um, environmentally friendly option. The production of hydrogen includes the electrolyzer and compressor, as well as storage, which will all follow proper code standards and regulations to be within an appropriate safety grade. The requirements of these systems have already been stated in the previous slides for the electrolyzer and compressor. For the storage, reference dimensions were used from pressure vessel manufacturing companies, and the design concept the team made stores the fuel at 100 megapascals, but many manufacturers do not give specific details for pressures this high. The model seen on the slide conducts a finite element analysis for a 37 megapascal pressure vessel. Using simplified geometry of the storage units and thin wall approximation, the hoop, longitudinal, and head stresses were computed along with the factor of safety. The, figure, the figures indicate areas where the internal pressure is applied, where blue has minimal forces and red being the areas that have the most stresses and will most likely have failure occur. The current material and geometry reference used indicates the changes are required to either the material, wall thickness, or inner diameter to increase the factor of safety to an industry level value. To solidify the reasoning that our design of producing hydrogen on site through electrolysis is a better alternative than the current method of steam reforming, a life cycle analysis was done. This life cycle analysis is a thorough assessment that compares the production of one kilogram of hydrogen using steam reforming versus electrolysis from cradle to grave. The graph shows a weighted comparison of the impacts both processes have on human health, ecosystems, and resources. When comparing this graph, where steam reforming is red and electrolysis is green, electrolysis on site cuts down the impacts on these three categories by roughly one third, with the biggest change being seen in human health. This decrease in the categories will lead to a benefit in both the environment and the social impacts of life. This is because with the cleaner process of producing hydrogen, there will be less pollution, increasing the quality of life for humans and the surrounding ecosystems while using less of the world's resources. This helps to prove that our design process meets our requirements of reducing the greenhouse gas emissions that are created through steam reforming. The initial capital costs are high because this includes the cost of equipment such as the electrolyzer and compressors. The lifetimes of this equipment is also very long, about 20 to 30 years. So this reduced the cost to under $2.75 per kilogram of hydrogen produced. We have suggested that to mitigate the costs of the station, we could sell the oxygen, oxygen gas byproduct from electrolysis. Electrolysis produces very pure oxygen that can be used for medical grade purposes and would reduce the overall water intake costs, allowing us to sell the hydrogen cheaper in order to be more competitive in the fuel market. Factoring in the cost of water, electricity, and maintenance, the cost per kilogram of hydrogen is approximately $9. The average cost of gas in Canada is $9.20 per 100 kilometers, and since it takes 0.866 kilograms of hydrogen to travel that same distance, the cost of producing hydrogen would be about $7.80 per 100 kilometers. This means we could charge the same price as gasoline and make a profit. A risk assessment was conducted and in accordance with the Technical Standard and Safety Act, and it was found that there was negligible risk to inhabitants for the electrolyzer, compressor, and storage unit, as well as minor risk from the refueling station. So this process is very safe. To conclude, our design solution consists of a hydrogen production facility directly attached to a felling station. The hydrogen will be produced from the water electrolysis using the solar energy produced on site as well as Ontario's energy grid. Our next steps will be the completion of a final design report as well as board meetings with a multiple of cities and towns for the determination of the first facility here in Ontario. We hope that you enjoyed our presentation and we thank you for watching.